You want to hear some hot damn takes as we wake up here on a Wednesday or a Thursday? I want to get these takes uh, right here out of the way. I'm going to say two hot takes about the NFL season as we just unveiled preseason. I looked at all the schedules. I love the Browns playing the Giants. The top two picks are going to be coming to MetLife. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for that game. It's going to be very, very good to have those two teams playing. Jets, Giants, um, Eagles go to the Browns in week three. So when your team shit, that's when you have amazing preseason games because Buffalo's going to be must-watch. A.J. McCarron quarterback battle. Uh, the Jets are going to be amazing in the preseason. Whenever there's a new quarterback, that's where I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch Allen Mayfield, Lamar Jackson, um, Josh Rosen, and, of course, Sam Darnold and all these guys that I just mentioned, Allen, Darnold, Mayfield, Rosen, and Lamar. Uh, I'll even watch Lawletta. I'll watch out for sleepers. Kirk Cousins against the, the Bears. I don't know if you guys ever watched Kirk Cousins, but Kirk Cousins in preseason was amazing. I remember, like, sitting back. I was at, like, a beach location, actually, in Delaware. I was at the Delaware Beach, and I watched Kirk Cousins play against the Chicago Bears. And in Buffalo, the, in, or in, in Delaware, they showed the Redskins games. And watching preseason football in August, it's one of the greatest things on earth because you can go out on your porch, you can crack a cold beer, you don't have to watch it that closely, and you get games on TV at 10.30 at night. Like, I can watch the, the, the Oakland Raiders on a Saturday night, I can watch them play at 10.30 at night. It's fucking beautiful. And then you know that the football season is right around the corner. That's what's amazing is that preseason is like the best appetizer. It's like you're at a steakhouse and it's your bread is being served and you're just sitting down for your first glass of wine, whatever. You know you have an amazing meal coming, but it's but it's but literally the menu's right on the table. And preseason football, my morale is, is at its highest during late August because then I know that we have a full slate of things to get to and life is just turning out beautiful in late August if every day can feel like late August where you have something to look forward to that that's when life's at its best but anyway that was a preseason diatribe let's see who how many people actually get to this point in the video where I'm going to talk about and I'm going to title it this so people will react anyway I believe that Todd Bowles is not going to make it out of the 2017 season 2018 season Todd Bowles in his offense with the New York Jets. I'm going to go down the list of games last year where Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles is a guy that I think doesn't communicate at all with the offensive side of the ball. Unless Jeremy Bates is incredible, and if Jeremy Bates is, in, is very good, he will get hired away. The Jets are in a lot of trouble. In fact, even very good teams like Vikings and Titans are in trouble too because if Matt LaFleur is good, if DeFilippo is good, you lose the those guys immediately and that's why if I was an NFL owner I pay D Filippo if you're paying Mike Zimmer six million a year or seven million I pay D Filippo four if you're a billionaire why not pay the coordinators a shit ton of money to stay so you look at Jeremy Bates as an offensive coordinator and frankly we don't know how he's going to do as a quarterback coach John Moore, well, first of all, he hasn't been a good quarterback coach for Christian Hackenberg. No improvement. Bryce Petty, zero improvement. I thought Bryce Petty had talent. He's fast enough to play in the NFL. The arm strength is there. The hand size is there. He's tall. He could play. Same with Hackenberg. Instead of getting Hackenberg in physical condition, Hackenberg remained slow in that Lions preseason game when he played last year. He does not understand pass rushes or blitzes. There's no hot. Jeremy Bates did a shitty job at developing these quarterbacks. Zero question about it. Now, maybe it was because these quarterbacks suck. Yes. Maybe these quarterbacks are not fast studies. Also a also possibly, but the Jets made an in-house hire, okay? A very easy hire to make, a very non-risky hire to make with Jeremy Bates. And frankly, I'm not all that excited about the New York Jets on offense, okay? So here's what I'm saying. Could Todd Bowles be John Fox? And the answer is probably, 
because Todd Bowles, like John Fox, doesn't have a presence, doesn't have a great presence. Even Fox has more of a presence with Carolina and with all his stops than Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles has no presence, not a lot of leadership qualities, okay? Very quiet. On defense, his cornerbacks play hard for him, yes, but in terms of managing the whole scope of the program as a head coach, you got to be the CEO and you have to run an organization and a ship. When I look at a Todd Bowles team, I see a team that's incredibly inconsistent consistent. I see a team that on offense, Todd Bowles just lets do whatever the hell it wants. He has no input on the on that side of the football. And as a head coach, you got to have a plan. Okay. Even Mike Vrabel in Tennessee had the gall, him and John Robinson as the general manager, to go out and get Matt LaFleur. And even Mike Vrabel wants the offense to be moldable and he wants the offense to be up-tempo and he has a vision and a blueprint for the offensive side of the ball. Mike Zimmer as well wants it to be pro-style, wants there to be a foundational running game. Todd Bowles doesn't really have any input on offense. And looking at Todd Bowles, that Tampa Bay game was a complete joke. The Denver game was one of the worst games I've ever watched. I mean, when you look at Todd Bowles, this team benefited from a soft schedule. They did play great in the Kansas City game. They did look great against the New England Patriots when they got out to a 14 to nothing lead. There were some high points to the season, but I look at Todd Bowles, and I don't think he's elite. If Todd Bowles ever wins a playoff game, I'll be completely floored. If Todd Bowles ever does anything special, you can come back to this video, and you can roast me just like I was dead wrong on the Rams last year. If you're going to have a damn opinion and you're going to have a YouTube channel, I suggest that you go out on a limb on some things. And for me, this is a very comfortable limb for me to stand on as I think Todd Bowles is gone. I think there's a good chance that Vance Joseph, some of the same things, is gone. But if I was taking Vance or Todd Bowles, Vance even has a little more personality than Todd Bowles. The thing is, though, I really look at both of those guys, and I don't see great futures for them. (laughs) I don't. So, and then you could say Anthony Lynn, you know, in in, in Chargers. I mean, the Chargers improved a little bit, but could you imagine if all those coaches got fired? Then everybody would point to, oh, the elephant in the room, they're all African-American coaches. No, because Anthony Lynn also, does he have control? Now, I will give Lynch a lot of credit, Anthony Lynn. That team got better. That team competed. This is a good defensive team, and Lynn did bounce back. Vance Joseph had a disastrous year, period. Vance Joseph needs to step up. Todd Bowles has had his moments. He's never had a quarterback. Now that he has a quarterback, will he turn it into John Fox or not? Dirk Cutter is another guy. This is a make it or break it year. Now, what I remember of Dirk Cutter is Dirk Cutter and the Bucs were horrible all last year. Okay, they had some really embarrassing performances. Uh, The Saints, they got shut out. They play in the hardest division in the NFL. Yes, they played great at the end of the year. They seem to find something. And now they're getting veterans. Could this stem to next year? Because what we remember is what we just saw. And for Dirk Cutter, he's squarely on that hot seat as well. Marvin, of course. But you uh, you look at this now, this NFL... Can these guys make it out? I would say that Todd Bowles, if I had to put a firing meter on him, he'd be the, the, the guy on most on the hot seat and then Vance Joseph. So those are the two guys that I probably would go with because you saw the Matt Nag- Nagy thing going on now in Chicago. They're a completely different ball club. You saw... You saw Sean McVay come in after Jeff Fisher with a rookie quarterback. It's not that unusual now in this NFL to fire head coaches to fire head coaches after a rookie quarterback's first year in the NFL. It's not that unusual. So we are going to probably see that transpire as we go along now in the NFL. Those are just some of my hot takes. I'm going to have more hot takes as well. It's tempting to not give them all to you but maybe I should just give them all along if you listen to my live streams you can get the hot takes that you need that you need to get but I'm just telling you Todd Bowles no confidence in him whatsoever you guys know that Jared Goff Todd Bowles um you know Dak Prescott you know Carr maybe with with John Gruden can do better 
but I'm a big Patrick Mahomes guy, big Davis Webb fan. Those are just some of the just, just some of the tidbits here on Rover Sports of what's coming. I, I and again, it's very hard to not give you my top five watch out list for twenty eighteen, but you gotta save some stuff on the podcast to keep you guys on your toes.